Topic 5.2 Binary Phase Diagrams In this topic, I will first introduce you the isomorphous binary phase diagram on the construction of phase diagram, the calculation of phase and composition based on the level rule, and the solubility. And this is followed by binary eutectic phase diagram, and then the peritectic and the monotectic phase diagram. And finally, the phase diagrams for intermetallic phases and intermetallic compounds. So now let's first get familiar with the isomorphous binary phase diagram. Copper and nickel have quite similar atomic size and the same crystal structure of FCC. So they can form isomorphous binary phase diagram based on the picture over here. That the copper nickel system shows complete solubility because burst metals have similar crystal structure of FCC and nearly the same radii of atoms and electronegativity and valence. And on the x axis is the composition based on weight percent of copper and nickel. And here towards the left hand side, we have copper of 100%. And towards the right hand side, we adding up more nickel on weight percent till we have 100 weight percent of nickel on our right hand side. Along the y axis is the temperature, so that at this point is the melting point of pure copper. Then on another point here is the melting point of pure nickel. Now let's see some important lines. The first one is the liquidus line, as you can see in red. The liquidus line separates the liquid phase from solid or solid plus liquid phases. So that is, the solution is liquid above the liquidus line. So according to the graph lying here, the liquidus line in red. And from the definition, the liquidus line separates the liquid phase over here from any other phases that it might be solid solution or even liquid plus solid solution. And there is another important line over here, appears in blue, which is the solidus line. The solidus line is that below which the solution is completely solid. That means this solidus line separates the solid phase from any other phases that might be liquid or even the mixture of liquid plus solid solution. Therefore, for this type of isomorphous binary phase diagram, you can see liquidus line and solidus line, where the liquidus line separates the liquid phase from any other phases, and the solidus line separates the solid phase from any other phases. Above the liquidus line, the liquid having the composition according to the copper and nickel content. And down over here, the composition of solid solution or alpha phase depends on the mixture of copper and nickel and lying here in the region between the liquidus line and the solidus line. We have two phases of liquid and the solid solution and the fraction of liquid and alpha solid solution depends on the temperature and the composition of interest. And since copper and nickel have similar atomic size and crystal structure, so they are soluble to each other throughout the composition in both liquid and solid solution. So now let's see what happened at different point in the phase diagram. What we have here is still the isomorphous binary phase diagram of copper and nickel. At point A, you can see now there is only liquid phase. And if I draw the phase over here in circle, in there at point A is only liquid phase inside. And now if we lower the temperature crossing the liquidus line into point B, here we have the mixture of liquid and solid phase, and where the solid is the alpha solid solution. And you can see that from point A we have only liquid, and when the temperature reduces, we have to have the solid phase appearing as the islands over here. And these solid legions are alpha phase solid solution. If we reduce the temperature even further down to point C, now we're crossing the solidus line. Then at point C, we can only have the solid solution. As you can see from this picture, that the alpha phase we have now growing bigger and bigger till reaching at the solid phase once crossing the solidus line. So the phase diagram will tell us at a given composition and temperature what kind of phase that we can find. For example, 
at the composition of 30% of nickel and up to the temperature over here. So we now know that there should be only liquid phase. But if the temperature reduces down to 1200, which is over here, we have two phases as the mixture of liquid and alpha solid solution. But then down to 1100, we now have only solid solution, which is the solid phase. Next, I will move back a little bit how the isomorphous binary phase diagram is constructed. Let's start on the construction of phase diagram. First, I will remind you a little bit on the cooling curve of pure metal. As we have time in the x-axis and the temperature in the y-axis, if we're starting from here above the melting point of metal, or when the metal is in the liquid state, and once the melt cools down, the curve will come down like this. And once reaching the melting point of the metal, then the temperature remains constant at this melting point with time. And that is when the metal in the liquid state changes into the solid state. At this point, with increasing time, the temperature of solid metal reduces till reaching the room temperature. So this is the cooling curve of pure metal, starting from the liquid melt and passing through the transformation of the liquid into the solid state, and then cooling down of the solid metal. And now for the metal alloy. Remember that we have two metals mixing together. So we don't have the exact melting point of this mixture. The cooling curve of an alloy will appear like this, as you can see from the picture down here. If we once again start from the melt, first as the temperature reduces, the cooling curve comes down like this. And once touching the liquidus temperature, which is TL over here, the temperature will gradually reduce as in the curve over here, till reaching the solidus temperature over here. And that is below the solidus temperature. The phase is all in the solid state. And with increasing time, the temperature of the solid alloy reduces like here, down to room temperature. So now you can see the difference between the cooling curves of the pure metal and the cooling curve of the alloy. That of the alloys will not show the definite melting temperature. The difference between liquidus temperature and the solidus temperature depends on the composition of the two metals. First, if you look at the picture on your left hand side, showing different cooling curves of varied composition. So for example, if we mix metal B into metal A with varied percent from 0 to 100 percent of composition. So we have different cooling curves lying over here. The red line section on this cooling curve shows the cooling in the liquid state. And the blue line section over here shows the cooling in the solid state. And the green lines showing a constant temperature with time. So it shows the melting point of metal A. Since we consider at 0% of metal B, so that is metal A is the pure metal. Above here is the 100% of metal B. Same situation happens here. And since metal B has a higher melting point, this cooling curve then show higher melting point of metal B up here and larger regions of cooling in the solid state. And if we now consider the composition within 10 to 98% of metal B, we now see different cooling curves of alloys of different compositions. The greater the metal B is mixed into metal A, the shorter region of the liquid phase on cooling and the longer the cooling time in the solid phase. Now if we use this information to construct a different type of graph, like one you can see over here. Now the x-axis is the composition having pure metal A with 0% of metal B. And toward the right hand side over here, we have pure metal B at 100%. And now if I take on the cooling curves of all compositions varied from 0% to 100% of metal B, so you can see reducing portion of liquid cooling with increasing metal B. And down here in the blue region of solid alloy, we have increasing blue section on the cooling curve with increasing metal B composition. So if I refer to the definition of the liquidus line, that is the line that separates the liquid phase from any other phases. So I can connect the point where the liquid phase terminates over here in order to form the liquidus line, as you can see in red line over here. 
and form the same principle in order to obtain the solidest line, which is the line that separates the solid phase to any other phases. Then I connect the point when the alloys start to have all the solid phase over here. So now I can have the isomorphous binary phase diagram with the liquidus line in red and the solidus line in blue. And the area between these two lines appears in two phases, which are the liquid and the solid solution. And so picture A and picture B show how we can obtain the isomorphous diagram of copper and nickel. In picture A on the left hand side is the different cooling curves. First of the pure copper over here and for the pure nickel right there. But for the three cooling curves in between, there are the alloys at different composition of nickel at 20, 50 and 80%. From the same principle, if we draw the line connecting A to L1, L2, L3, and C, we will then obtain the liquidus line in the phase diagram of copper and nickel, starting from point A, L1, L2, L3, and C. With increasing composition of nickel, starting from 0 up to 20, 50, 80, and 100%. Then back to the cooling curve, once again, if we do the same for the solidus line, we can connect the point from B, S1, S2, S3, and D. Now then we have the solidus line over here, starting from B, S1, S2, S3, and D. At the composition of nickel at 0, 20, 50, 80, and 100% of nickel. Finally, we have the isomorphous binary phase diagram of copper and nickel. Having the liquidus line over here that separates the liquid phase from any other phases, and have the solidus line over here that separates the solid phase from any other phases. And you can notice that at zero composition of nickel or 100% of copper over here, at point A, it is the melting point of copper, which is at 184 Celsius. And same here again, at 100 weight percent of nickel, or at point C, it is the melting point of nickel at 1455 Celsius. And for the calculation of the amount of phase, we have to start learning about level rule, or level arm rule. The definition of the level rule is a tool that is used to determine the mole fraction or xi or the mass fraction or wi of a binary equilibrium phase diagram as you can see from this picture. Here is the example of the phase diagram of metal A and metal B and along the x-axis is the weight fraction of metal B. Along the y-axis is the temperature here we have again the liquidus line in red and the solidus line in blue. So the area above the liquidus line contains just one phase of liquid. And then the area underneath the solidus line contains just one phase of the liquid. And the area in between contains two phases, which are the liquid and the solid. So with the level rule, we can determine the fraction of liquid and solid phases for a given binary composition and temperature between the liquidus and the solidus line. That means at a given composition and temperature, for example at point O in the area of two phases, we can find out how much of the liquid and the solid phase at this condition. And what we use is the tie line method. First, we have to draw a composition line as given. For example, at the composition of the bill knot, as you can see in the crimson line, then you draw an isothermal line to intersect the phase line. So the isothermal line is at a given temperature, and that is to intersect the phase line, crossing the liquidus line at L, and crossing the solidus line at S. And also this isothermal line crossing the composition line at O. Then we can read the concentration of each solid and liquid phase. As we draw the line from the intersect of the tie line at L and S down to the x-axis. Over here, we have concentration of the solid at the bill S or percent B in weight fraction or weight percent. And also, we can find the concentration of the liquid 
or the composition attribute L as the weight fraction or the weight percent of B. From the level rule, we can find out the amount of phase at the given composition and the temperature as mentioned previously. And the rule is the phase fractions are inversely proportional to the length to the boundary for the particular phase. And that means when you draw a tie line crossing at the composition of interest, this section of length from L to S can be divided in two parts, which is A and B. Let B is the fraction of liquid, and let A is the fraction of solid, as you can see from the picture here. So at point O, you can see that the amount of B or liquid is higher than the amount of A or solid. And that is how the rule works, that the phase fractions are inversely proportional to the length to the boundary of a particular phase. And so let's not to get confused and make it easier. You can think of O as the focal point and the amount of phase that we want to find on the left. It is on to the right of the focal point. And so the amount of the phase on the right can be found on the opposite side, which is on the left to the focal point. And therefore the weight fraction of solid can be found as A divided by A plus B. So for the amount of solid, which is on the right hand side, can be found onto the left of the focal point, which is A over the total length of A plus B. So if we want to find the amount of liquid, which is on the left hand side, we have to calculate from the amount of B to the right of the focal point that is compared to the whole length of A plus B. And so we can find the weight fraction of liquid, that is B divided by the whole amount of both liquid and solid, which is A plus B. And in order to find the exact amount of A and B, we have to find it along the composition axis, which is down here on the X axis. In order to find A, so you now have the W0 minus the WL. And for the whole length from L to S or A plus B is the WS minus the WL, which is over here. So again, we have the weight fraction of solid or XS equals the W0 minus the WL divided by the WS minus the WL. So now let's find the weight fraction of liquid which is B divided by A plus B. And to find B, we then have the WS minus the W0, which is over here. And for the whole length of L to S is the WS minus the WL, which is over here. So we now have the weight fraction of liquid or XL equals the WS minus the W0 divided by the WS minus the WL. And XS and XL are calculated based on the weight fraction. So then we have XS plus XL equals 1 or unity. So this is the level rule that you can find the amount of phase based on weight fraction. Or if you want to find the percentage, you can just multiply by 100. Now let's get some practice on the calculation of the amount of solid and liquid phases by using the level rule. According to the isomorphous binary phase diagram of copper and nickel, first let's calculate the amount of solid phase for 53% of nickel at 1300 Celsius. And from the phase diagram, let's get some more detail like this. At 1300 Celsius, we can draw an isothermal line over here. And as we have to calculate the amount of solid phase at 53% of nickel, and hence we have to find the composition on the x-axis or the composition axis. So at this point, we have the build not as 53% of nickel. Next, we have to find the WS and the WL. When you draw the tie line crossing the solid dust line, at this point, you draw the line down here, you can find the WS which is the composition at 58% of nickel, as it is described over here. And for the composition of the WL, at the crossing of isothermal line and the liquidus line, down here you have the composition of the WL, which is 45% of nickel. So now you can calculate the amount of solid phase at 53% of nickel at the temperature of 1300 Celsius. The amount of solid phase or alpha solid solution can be found by having A divided by the whole section here, which is A plus B. So we have XS equals A over A plus B. We can get A from 53 minus 45, which is over here. 
and for the whole length of A plus B that we can find from the phase diagram which is 58 minus 45 which is over here so we come out with the values of 0.615 that is on the weight fraction basis and if you want to find out on the percentage basis we have to just multiply by 100 then we have 61.5% of solid next let's get on to the calculation of the amount of the liquid phase at 53% of nickel and also at the same temperature of 1300 celsius now you want to find the amount of liquid and from the level rule it is the amount of b divided by the whole section here of a plus b so the amount of liquid phase or xl equals b over a plus b we can find b as 58 minus 53 which is over here and divided by 58 minus 45 then we have the values of 0.385 which is the amount of liquid phase based on the weight fraction basis on the percentage basis we have 33.5 percent of liquid and then you have to remember that xs plus xl is unity so you have to check out the number over here as well this is the example to use level rule to calculate the amount of phases that appear in the two-phase region providing that you have the composition and temperature given next let's check on that what kind of phases is going to be present at a given composition over various temperatures for example if you look at this phase diagram it is very simple isomorphous binary phase diagram of metal A and metal B. Over here is the liquid phase and the solid phase down here. The area of two phases of liquid and solid phase lying in between the liquidus and the solidus lines. For example, if you want to find out the phase at the composition of 40 weight percent of B, which is along the dashed line over here. Then imagine at this x composition of 40 weight percent of B. And at point A, of course, at point A, the metal alloy should be in the liquid state. In this circle here, we then have all the liquid phase having 40 weight percent of B. And now, if I lower down the temperature to point B, that just crossing the liquidus line. Imagine what's gonna happen here. At point B, when just crossing the liquidus line and just below the liquidus line, we have to have small amount of solid phase happening here. Like you can see in the small orange area over here. At point B, the composition of the liquid still having 40 weight percent of B. And if you want to find out the composition of solid phase that just you created here, just draw the isothermal line crossing the solidus line over here then you find out the composition of the solid phase which is 78 weight percent of B so here at B we have the liquid having 40 weight percent of B and have the solid phase having 78 percent of B next if I lower down the temperature even further to point C now we can see clearly that we have both liquid and solid staying together so that for the microstructure, we have larger areas of the solid phase, as you can see from here at point C. And now let's check in on the composition of liquid and the solid phase. Remember to check the composition. You have to draw the line crossing the liquidus line to check out the composition of the liquid phase, which is now 25% of B. And when we check out the composition of the solid phase, just draw the line crossing the solidus line over here. Then we have 62 weight percent of B as the composition of the solid phase at point C. So now come back to the microstructure at point C. We have larger areas of solid phase having the composition of 62 percent of B. And for the liquid phase, we have lesser amount at the composition of 25% of B. As the temperature reduces down, more and more solid phase taking place until just to cross the solidus line 
at point D. Now you have most of the solid phase. You can see from the microstructure over here, only very tiny amount of liquid remaining in the system at point D. When you check out the composition, you can find out that we have the solid phase at the composition of 40% of B and the liquid phase having the composition of 14% of B. Finally, when the temperature comes down way below the solid dust line at point E, now we just have all the solid phase having the composition of 40% of B. And this is how we find out the microstructure of phases that are taking place at a given composition and temperature.